Hi, I'm Zachibus and this is my second video for the Unreal Tournament forums and this is based on spectator features that I'd like to see implemented into the next UT and a lot of these ideas actually came from a game I used to play back in 2007 called World in Conflict and I played that in the CPL World Tour and it had amazing spectator features that I'd never seen in another game ever before and basically it was essentially a TriCaster but for a video game. It had its primary screen and its secondary screen which showed off nine different screens that you could follow all the action on a crazy RTS game and you really didn't miss a thing. It had smooth transitions from clips and it would cue you in, it would time you in and basically essentially I'd like to see this emulated in Unreal Tournament in a first person shooter because I believe that a spectator game really needs to be developed for an arena shooter that lets everybody understand what's going on in a smooth, flexible way that just makes it so appealing to watch. And I think this spectator mode really could do that. And I've seen lots of awesome posts that have been going on that Raxi uh, forum post as well. And you guys should head over there because Snuff as well has posted up some crazy awesome stuff. And I think he's developed like a prototype with timers and everything. and seriously check that out but anyways let's move on to some of the things that I'd like to add on a basic level that this would be primarily focused on a single point of view and essentially you can see all of that on this screen right now so we have a very clear indication of who we're viewing which is me as the blue player uh, we have armor timings so you folks at home know when basically the next fight's going to happen this is great for shoutcasters in 38 seconds, the shield belt's gonna be up. And usually, a big shield belt fight, you're gonna have both players turn up trying to contest it and get that shield belt away. And you can build up some tension and build up a scene, essentially, with a time like this. Because at the moment, I have to time with my head, which is fine, because I've done it for years as a professional gamer in, in games like Quake, Unreal Tournament, Painkiller, the list goes on. Anyways, I played pretty much everything. Um, and it's just nice to have that timer there to remind you about having to count four different items in your head and also commentate a game. Uh, also important to note is having this gun model. It's so important. It really helps people feel less oozy or a little bit motion sick when that model's not there and that crosshair's not there. I've known a lot of people get motion sickness from looking at first person shooters. I've also, by playing uh, Shoot Mania as well, I've had a guy at LAN come up to me and ask me if I was playing a flight simulator because he thought I was floating in the air for so long because I jumped off a map. Very odd, but you know it's very important to have a gun model. And also important to show what the map score is at the current time as well. This indicates who's leading as the game progresses. Health bar, obviously, as well, builds up drama. And this is just basically the standard basic that I'd really love to see implemented as soon as possible. But now we're gonna be talking about some of the advanced stuff as well. So this is the advanced spectator mode that I'd love to see implemented into the next Unreal Tournament. This would be amazing because you could follow all the action incredibly smoothly and not miss a beat. And a lot of the problems in the previous Unreal Tournaments when you were following people in spectator mode you could only follow one person at a time. So you'd have to switch constantly between the two players. So you could see their health, you know, what weapons they've picked up, what their stats are looking like, whereabouts they are on the map. And what happened is, is that you had essentially this happening, switching from point of view very quickly just to find out the information. So the shoutcasters could really show you what was going on. and. It's basically a vomit comet and it's pretty damn nasty sometimes and people that aren't familiar with FPS games might get a little bit ill just watching that and they won't understand why the point of view suddenly changed. So this evens it out essentially. So your co-caster, if you have one that is, can watch all the action on end screen here. So he can tell you all the stats of what he's got in terms of health and what his weapons are looking like without having to switch the main point of view over here so transitions will be less often they will be smoother and much more easier to follow the pace of the game now say we want to change to ends 
point of view here. We want to see what's happening on his side of the map. We want to have him full screen. We want to show him some attention and some love. So how do we change point of view? Well, it's simply as done as double clicking, but there's some indicators to let you know what's actually going on. So if we look at the Zacubus screen here, it's highlighted green. So this is just indicating that Zacubus is live. This is also indicated in this preview screen as well, which is the replay screen, which I'll go into a little bit more detail in a second. But this green bar here is just essentially saying, yes, this, this is the live point of view here, Zacubus. Now, if we wanted to select N to basically follow his point of view, we basically just click once here. And basically it will turn yellow on the outside, like pretty much like what I've drawn here on the HUD, look a little bit prettier though. And then once you're ready to switch the point of view, you simply click onto the screen again and it will change the outside color to green like Zacubus is right now, indicating it's live. And also the replay cam right here will switch to N as well. So N will be here essentially. Now this makes, like I said, transitions very easy. And of course, having all these points of view available to you, you can see when the real appropriate time is to switch that point of view. So let's see what this system looks like when it's actually playing out live. So at the moment we are following N's point of view. And as you can see, this is a green overlay at the moment, but that is soon to change because, well, I feel as if I want to watch my point of view because I'm super sexy, let's be honest. And basically simply click once, click twice, as you just saw there, from yellow to green. And basically now Zacubus is live on the main point of view. And, you know, like I said, because we can follow both of these screens, we can always find the right moment to change on that transition. Now, another thing that I'd like to talk to you about is the replay system. Now, again, it uses that kind of same queuing system, but if we just were to select anywhere on the bar here, you know, scan through, as soon as you start scanning through, it essentially queues up this window. So it will turn yellow as soon as we hit that button. And hopefully in a minute, there's gonna be a frag worthwhile to actually go back on and watch again. So just give it a minute as I made this video slightly a little bit too long at this particular point, but, uh, this should demonstrate it pretty well. So we're still watching my point of view and there is an excellent moment that we've just witnessed. Yay, three rockets to the face. And you know, that was a slightly noteworthy frag. So we've clicked on the, the bar here and as you can see, it's queued up and ready to go. We just need to press the play icon here. And the instant replay function is now playing. We've got the replay icon here showing it's a replay and the secondary point of view as well which is showing the live game here as well so we can keep up the action but if we want to do this again we can slip, simply click here again and this time we're going to click the slow motion button so we get everything exactly the same we've gone to the exact same moment and this screen is turned live now but once it's finished playing the clip it will go back to the the queued screen here which is yellow automatically and it's just indicating that it was two times the speed as well. And that's just the replay system that I've implemented into and how you'd queue it up. And I hope that's easy to understand. Um, if not, just let me know in the, the thread and stuff or any changes or any ideas that would additionally help it. And now we're talking about the stats and how you would do this. And it's exactly the same system. The yellow bar comes up. That means we pre queued it, we clicked it again, and the stats have come up. Now, I've had a pet peeve with having to press tab before and showing a massive scoreboard that covers up the screen and you miss the action, but this gives us loads of options to pull up cool stats in a nice position that doesn't take up most of the screen. Um, you can actually select all though and really demonstrate everything, but this would be more like in a pause scenario if the game's locked out or something's happened, somebody's crashed, we can pause it and we can look at the stats and talk about the player. And as you can see, I've done the stats a little bit differently. I've 
like to have a more human touch that we get to follow the player, see who is actually playing on those stats pages and find out what their worst weapon is, what their favorite map is, how old they are, whatever, what country they're from and have that built into the game as well so we can always have a story to tell about a player when something horribly has gone wrong. Also with the stats page, you can you know preview it and watch it in the preview screen just like the uh, different points of view and you can just read it out. You don't necessarily have to put it out and uh, transmit it out to the world, but you can sound like a genius by reading off all the stats like you knew them off by heart. You look really clever. So let me know what you think of the spectator mode, guys. I've just seen actually a post as I'm just in this last segment of voiceover that uh, Snuff has done like a, a demo replay system already. So it's looking very possible that this could be actually a, re a reality into the game. And that just blows my mind already. So let's, I'm just hoping that you really smart guys that are able to build the game, able to develop it, can really put all your visions together and we can make this a truly awesome game. It's a very exciting time. Um, anyways, I hope this video shows what I was trying to show essentially of how the system would work and how you would queue things up and time things accordingly and of course there would be like keyboard shortcuts as you can see like the R and the S and the M or the K is highlighted where it says replay stats and kills and you know I would imagine that on the number pad one would go to player one and number two would go to player two etc yeah just stuff that would be usually obvious in a spectator feature um, be implemented as well um, but thanks guys for watching I hope um, this is good or you liked it enjoyed the content and let me know what you thought uh, if you thought it was bad just you know even let me know criticize it's always good to bring out that feedback